Let's talk about light and the energy that results from organisms using light. The sun's energy is a primary resource, but only primary producers can use it. It's the energy source for photosynthesis, and we refer to certain wavelengths of light used for photosynthesis as photosynthetic active, photosynthetically active radiation, or PAR. So chlorophylls are the main pigments responsible for light capture for photosynthesis. They absorb both blue and red light. And because they take those wavelengths out, green light is reflected. You can see in this action spectrum, both chlorophyll A and B absorb light at a, between um, 400 and 500 nanometers, and another peak between um, 590 and 650. But those aren't the only pigments that capture light. The carotenoids are accessory pigments, so-called because of their orange and yellow and red colors. They have an absorbance peak between 440 and 480. And an important carotenoid, lutein, has been shown to be very important in eye health. In higher plants, photosynthesis takes place in chloroplasts, organelles that are membrane bound that have additional membranes inside. These are called the photosynthetic lamellae. And there are two kind, two parts of photosynthesis, the light reactions and the dark reactions. The light reactions take place in the grana and stroma lamellae. These are all the internal membranes. The grana are the stacks of membranes, the stroma lamellae, the long skinny ones. The dark reactions take place in the liquid matrix of the chloroplast, the part that's called the stroma. The way photosynthesis takes place, light energy powers the light reactions, which then power the dark reactions, which don't require light and often take place in the dark, but not necessarily. That fixes carbon dioxide in the dark reactions, making the organic molecule the sugars. So there are three main steps in this photosynthetic process. The first is called the Hill reaction, where water is split and NADP is reduced to NADPH. The second is photosynthetic phosphorylation, which makes the high energy molecule ATP from ADP. Both of these two are light reactions. And then the third is the dark fixation of carbon dioxide, and this is called the Calvin cycle because it was discovered by Melvin Calvin. So typical photosynthesis, which has, is referred to as C3 photosynthesis because of the three carbon molecules involved in the process, has first the light reactions where chloroplasts and water and adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphorus and NADP combine to form ATP and NADPH, two higher energy molecules, plus oxygen is evolved in this step. In the dark reactions, in the chloroplasts, carbon dioxide is um, fixed using energy from ATP and NADPH, yielding lower energy ADP and NADP and that inorganic phosphate, plus sugars and starch, which are polymers of sugars. So this process has a 5-carbon intermediate ribulose diphosphate that splits to form two 3-carbon molecules, PGA. 
Here's an energy scheme for the light reactions of photosynthesis. Both photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 require a photon of light to take um, electrons to a higher energy level where they can then power uh, for they, the electrons come from water splitting the electrons are taken to a higher energy level and then ADP forms is ATP and NADP forms NADPH this is a diagram of the carbon Calvin cycle so-called because it's circular and ATP powers the Calvin cycle taking in carbon dioxide and NADPH provides energy as well. Products of the Calvin cycle are fructose and glucose, the hexose sugars, which combine to form the disaccharide sucrose, which can form long chains and become starch and cellulose. So the C3 pathway works fine as long as the temperatures are pleasant, but a problem is that in warmer situations, carbon dioxide and oxygen compete for the same site. Sites and what happens is plants may respire more than they photosynthesize in warm environments, burning up all of the sugars they make and not growing and not doing well. So certain plants have evolved a way to concentrate carbon dioxide within their cells. They expend energy and concentrate carbon dioxide in inside tubes that are protected by bundle sheath cells. And if you make a cross-section of a leaf, you can see a special kind of anatomy that gives you a hint that this is a so-called C4 plant. Actually, there are two alternatives to C3, regular old photosynthesis, C4 and CAM. C4 photosynthesis has the light and dark reactions of photosynthesis spatially separated. And this is useful because carbon dioxide is kept in one place and doesn't compete for the same sites oxygen does. And C4 involves an alternative enzyme, PEP carboxylase, that does not catalyze photorespiration. And most importantly, at the namesake, is a four-carbon intermediate oxaloacetic acid. CAM photosynthesis separates the capture of light and uptake of carbon dioxide temporally. Organic acids store the energy during the day to fuel the uh, carbon fixation at night, so this is truly dark fixation in CAM photosynthesis. In this diagram we can see how the different functions are separated spatially. In the mesophyll of the leaf, the cells that are full of chloroplasts capture light and then Malate, the four carbon intermediate, provides energy in the bundle sheath cells where carbon dioxide is concentrated, and this thwarts photorespiration, allowing the photosynthetic process with the Calvin cycle to take place to form sugar molecules. Here's that anatomy I was talking about, the so called Kranz. In German, that means wreath anatomy, like a Christmas wreath. On the top is a cross-section of the leaf of sugar cane, a tropical grass. And around the vascular bundles, you can see bulliform bundle sheath cells making a very pronounced wreath arrangement. At the bottom is a cross-section of a leaf of an oat, plant, which is a temperate zone grass, 
They also have vascular bundles, but much smaller sheaths around the vascular bundles because at regular temperatures, um, the carbon dioxide and oxygen won't compete. So in C4 photosynthesis, energy is required to concentrate carbon dioxide, but in hot climates it's worth it because if without C4 photosynthesis, more than half of the carbon fixed would be lost to photorespiration even before sugars are formed. So there would be a lot less product of photosynthesis. Consequently, a very small proportion of plants in northern regions like Canada are C4. In the northern United States, 30 to 50 percent of the plants are C4. It's more common in grasses and plants of open sunny areas. Whereas in the tropics, the subtropics like South Florida, tropics like Central and um, Northern South America, 70% to 100% of the plants use C4 photosynthesis. Here's a diagram showing um, isoclines of percentage of C4 in grasses the closer you get to the equator. So you can do these diagrams for different plant families, but the grasses tend more than many plant families to have C4 photosynthesis. The, if you look at the photosynthetic optimum for a plant, the temperature at which it has maximum photosynthesis, C4 plants have much higher temperature optima than C3 plants. Here are two California plants. The C3 Camasonia, with its optimum temperature about 24 or 25, versus Amaranthus palmari, with its optimum up to more than 40 degrees centigrade. The other alternative, often found in hot, dry places like deserts, is called CAM, this stands for Crashelian Acid Metabolism. And this is found in plants that are succulent, members of the family Crashulaceae for one, but also Cactaceae and other plants. Even bromeliads have CAM photosynthesis. In CAM, light and dark reactions are separated in time. So the dark reactions take place at night when there's less evaporation of water. The stomata are open, the carbon dioxide comes into the plant, and the sugars are made. The carbon dioxide accumulates in organic acids, crashelian acids. That's where the name comes from. And the more succulent the plant, the greater the amount of CAM photosynthesis. Here are members of the same genus that are different. Some are less succulent than others, and succulence is measured as grams of water per unit area. So the most succulent at the upper right have the greatest dark carbon dioxide fixation as percentage of total CO2 uptake.